first still, but hopefully they'll they'll wander in. And I know we have two board members who will be absent this evening. Uh, Lisa Dunnick just let us know that she's being held uh, at work against her will. No, no, she's she's she, she's stuck at work in Hartford. And um, Jaime Gomez uh, got in touch with me a few days ago to say that he had to travel to Colombia on family emergency business. Um, so he'll be back uh, next week with us, but he's not here tonight. Um, so let's start out with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Board of Education meeting minutes from December 11th. So moved. Mark, seconded by Katina. Any discussion on the minutes? No. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Um, so let me see. We have three people uh, signed up to speak. Under public comment, uh, first person is Joanne Haddad. Good evening. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, good evening. Joanne Haddad, assistant principal at Wyndham Middle School. Um, I just wanted to come in with a positive note on this uh, first meeting of 2020, Clear Vision. Uh, just to say that um, we've had an awesome week back so far in Wyndham Public Schools and it began uh, with a great kickoff as I'm sure some other people here can attest to um, on Monday morning with a presentation to certified staff and administrators by um, Dr. Youngberg and Mr. Weathers and I just have to tell you the feel of it was amazing it it just started everyone off on a really great note so not only not only was there humor involved and just transparency and honesty but we had data brought to us as you would mr weathers brought that to us in a real uh, fun fashion in like a, a trivia kind of way that uh, we had audience participation with so that was really cool we were given incentives as staff members that we thought um was a really nice way to model what we as educators do for our students um, and, and as administrators for our teachers. So we thought that was an awesome way to start the year. Um, as well, it just it created such a great feel of uh, positive climate for Wyndham Public Schools to start off the year. So I'd like to thank you know Dr. Youngberg, Mr. Weathers for that on behalf of many, many, many staff members that talked about it. And I know that we did have... Um, a survey to fill out afterwards so I'm not sure how far that goes but I can only imagine that they were you know 100% maybe you'll get 99.9 .9 positive <laughs> comments but uh, um, I, I hope you have the opportunity to see that the other positive note was Tuesday yesterday we started uh, at Wyndham Middle School um, with the announcement of a uh, happy birthday to Wyndham Middle School. 23 years ago yesterday, the doors opened for uh, public education to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders from Kramer Middle School. Uh, it was a cold morning, but we all uh, loaded up out in front of Kramer Middle School. Students carried books from Kramer to Wyndham Middle um, mm -hmm. and, and helped to start up the library on that day. Um, it was an awesome day. I'm wearing the shirt that uh, a woman named Pam Weiss and I uh, designed for making the move we sold them as fundraisers in 96 has a picture of Kramer Kramer was 100 years old at that time so it, it went from 97 f being Wyndham High School by the way prior to being Kramer it was Wyndham High School where my parents both graduated and then uh, became Kramer and then we made that move over to Wyndham Middle so I look forward to um, 100 years there and how amazing that the shirt still fits. <laughs> I know what, <laughs> now what you're really thinking is, what have you been doing with your life for 23 years that that still fits? You haven't lost any weight. All right. But anyway, everything's all positive. It's been very good. And again, I really do want to thank you. What a difference in the way people got started yesterday. I mean, I mean on Monday. I mean that wholeheartedly. So thank you. Thank you very much. 
It's nice to hear uh, happy news and a funny report about your sweatshirt that's still <laughs> fit. Um, the next person up is David Light. Good evening. Shall we say long winded and uh, had to have to pull the plug on me many times. Yeah. So I know I have a constraint here right I know I have a constraint here right now. You need to hold that. Yeah, what did you do with this? I left it on. I left it on. Testing? Yep. No? No. Yeah. Hello. Well this has okay, happened to there me you before go. too many times. Okay. Right up. So uh, please forgive me for reading a prepared statement. It will be short. Uh, but I didn't want to miss any points, so that's why I'm going to be reading from it. Well, good evening. My name is David Light, and I have been a lifelong resident of Wyndham, and I am proud to say that I am a 1966 graduate of Wyndham High School. Hey. My children attended Wyndham schools, and I presently have a, one grandson. I have four grandchildren, but I have one grandson in grade 10 here at the high school, and uh, his brother is in grade 5 at the middle school, and I believe in Wyndham schools. I am a retired high school principal who served for 30 years as an assistant principal and principal in the same high school. I have made the conscious decision to become more involved in my grandchildren's education here in town by becoming more involved in their schools. My goal in the coming years is to make positive contributions on behalf of all students. I am here this evening to speak of the importance of stable, consistent school leadership and to offer an endorsement. Stable and consistent leadership at the school level is vital to any school's success. The culture of a school is forged by the relationships a principal builds with students, teachers, parents, and the community at large. It is a fabric constructed with support, trust, and confidence. It takes years to weave this fabric. Schools experiencing frequent administrator and teacher turnover will have great difficulty achieving this goal. When the high school principal at Wyndham left in December of 2018, I believe it was, Ms. Pamela Cavanaugh was appointed acting principal. Now, acting to me denotes that is a position that is currently vacant and uh, someone is in the position as a sub. Nearly a year ago, a survey appeared on the Wyndham High School website. It asked parents and community members to give input as to what they would like to see in a high school principal. I was one who responded. Since then, I ha I've heard nothing of an interview process to fill this position. And Ms. Cavanaugh is still acting principal. For nearly 30 years, Ms. Cavanaugh has been and the Wyndham School System, and I'm sure you know that, for providing educational contributions that have enriched the educational fabric of Wyndham Middle School and Wyndham High School. Her 13 years at the high school demonstrate involvement with a variety of initiatives and programs that are student-centered. Like me, Ms. Cavanaugh believes in Wyndham Schools. Now, as acting principal, she continues to focus staff efforts on implementing programs that strive to improve student attendance with an attendance mentee program, to instill school spirit and whipper pride, and to collegially brainstorm new academic pathways. Other programs under her watch include a Teachers Observing Teachers program to embrace best practices and to allow for cohesiveness throughout the school. There is a school-wide focus on SAT skills. Data teams have been organized to inform instruction, and an advisory program addresses social and emotional learning skills for all students. These are initiatives designed to meet student needs. She has ambitious yet attainable goals. They demonstrate the commitment of someone who wishes to strengthen and personalize the education of students, so to provide higher levels of achievement by providing them access to opportunities to develop them socially and emotionally within a school culture, within a school fabric that is inclusive. It will take time, and it requires a stable and consistent leadership. I am hoping 
that the process of recruiting a principal for the high school will begin very soon. Through action, Ms. Cavanaugh has demonstrated her dedication, her commitment, and loyalty to the Wyndham School District for nearly three decades. That is stability at its finest. That is worthy of our respect and admiration. When it comes time to narrow down the final candidates for high school principal, I sincerely hope that Ms. Cavanaugh's name is at the top of the list. I believe in Wyndham Schools, and I believe in Mrs. Cavanaugh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Light. Um, and then next we have Nicole Bay. Good evening. I'm Nicole Good evening. Bay. I'm a teacher at Barrows. Um, and I'm just here kind of to echo what um, Joanne said about our welcome back after our long vacation. Um, first of all, the welcome on Monday morning was very upbeat. Um, teachers felt welcomed back. It just You could see people standing taller and feeling happy. Um, not only did Dr. Youngberg and Mr. Weathers help us to celebrate our successes, they were also very serious about the work that we still have to do. And they have a clear vision for how that work is to get done and what they expect from us um, with allowing us to feel validated as teachers. Um, we had a meeting at our school afterwards with the two of them who came and met at Barrows. Um, and this had happened in the past with superintendents where they would just come and kind of, you know, check in, see how things are going. Um, and I know that it was part of the message that Mr. Weathers and Dr. Youngberg kind of wanted to like, this is our message, this is where we're going, kind of give us an idea of where they were. This was the first time, and I'm not exaggerating, the first time that staff felt comfortable to ask questions, to share um, anecdotes about things that were happening in our building and actually felt valued. We walked out of there feeling great, knowing that there is a plan for where we're going and that we will get there. So I just wanted to state that it's been a really great start um, coming back after vacation. It could have been really tough going to um, PD for a day and not getting to our kids right away, but you guys made it great for us to come back and really set the bar high for us moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's a good day. And, and thank you to the staff for uh, such, a, such a successful day. That's wonderful. Um, there's nobody else signed up under uh, public comment. Is there anybody who came in after the sheet came up here that would like to speak? No? Okay. Um, so now we're on to um, the superintendent's reports. Okay. We tried a little different format. In your packet, you have the narratives on all the things we're celebrating, but we also created, thank you to Margaret, um, we created a little PowerPoint slideshow for you, which we're going to use the pictures um, on our website and in other locations to sort of continue the whole idea of celebrating the things we're doing well. Um, we set up those categories based on the strategic plan categories. Did you get a copy of this? Here, I'll give you mine. Okay, thanks. So the, f the first thing, um, and I think I can do it from here. Uh, the first picture up on our screen there is uh, our several pictures of our students basically being good humans and working to um, raise money for a variety of uh, agencies uh, and groups around town, um, cute little pictures in their PJs right there. And that is under our category partners as resources. Um, and stop me if you have any questions or need any more information on any of these, but we're just gonna go through the, the pictures together. Uh, another example on the next slide, oops, I went the wrong way. There we go. Um, is our storyline um, work where Wyndham High School students are working on the videos there. There's a couple pictures for you to see. Um, and again, the narratives are in your board packet, so hopefully you had a chance to read through those. Um, then s uh, some pictures from our category uh, under learning environment in, next pic next slide there, there you go. Um, Jessica Sager's classroom in, in grade three earned the opportunity to have a saltwater tank um, be put into their classroom. It's actually beautiful when you walk by with the lights on, um, and they're learning all about what happens in fish tanks and how to care for those little critters, so that's exciting. Moving on, we have a picture of students who are singing, uh, at, that's the STEM Academy, but um, the students from the middle school and Barrows performed in their winter concerts. You can probably see that picture better in, on the actual paper copy than you can up there, but they're looking happy singing there. Uh, then again, under student learning, on the next slide, we have um, pictures of our students taking part in our writing tutors program. 
Um, they actually made a video, and in your packet is a link. We were trying to figure out, I don't know, I think you get the packet as a PDF, which means you might not be able to open up that link, but we can send it to you through email so you can see the video. It's, it's not very long, but it's uh, very informative, and the kids made it, so we want you to watch it. Okay. Moving on, um, also in your packet is just a list of the staff members who have really gone above and beyond in terms of allowing us to put them in positions they weren't normally, uh, well, they weren't hired to do, but because of our budget constraints and the things we're working with, we have um, some staff members who are filling in and whose positions we've consolidated to save funds. Um, so there's some of their pictures up there. Um, in the slideshow, Melissa Gordon, Dave Icorn, Jose Camacho, uh, Randall Conway, Andrew McNoir, as you'll see in your narratives, they're all doing variations of their jobs um, to help the district get through 1920. So we want to celebrate them because um, they've gone above and beyond um, to help us out. I uh, also want to celebrate Nicole Bay uh, and, and her colleagues. Um, well, let me just grab their names because there's a number of them. They all presented, um, submitted presentations to a national conference that were accepted. So they'll be presenting in the spring in Boston, which is really exciting to have a number of our own teachers um, selected to, to present. That would be Nicole Bay, uh, Chelsea Greer, Pat McMahon, um, Kristen, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin her last name. Want to help me? Thank you. Okay. Well, she was on the original presentation submission, right? Uh, Carolina Mendez, Pat McMahon again, uh, Jan Tominelli, uh, Brittany Lapror, Laprior, uh, and Nicole Vitelli. So all of those teachers at, at Burroughs, uh, had presentations selected and they're going to be presenting in April, uh, on a trip that is completely funded by Burroughs. Grants. I just want to make that crystal clear. We know that that sometime, uh, sometimes is an issue. So we're very proud of the Barrows teachers and all the work they're doing outside of the district. And I think, oh, we, we also want to make sure that we um, continue to, to show you that we are focusing on the whole idea of improving student attendance. Um, we're also focusing on the idea of improving staff attendance. We want people to be in the seats as often as possible because we know if they're there, we can get the job done. So. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the celebrations uh, and pictures we've shown, I'm happy to try to answer them. Anybody have any questions? A, a very you like creative, the pictures? creative yeah. uh, presentation. Like very okay. good. And thank, you. thank you, Margaret, because she, she did all the grunt work. So appreciate and, it. And for us visual learners. Yes, like absolutely. Myself, it's very nice to see. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, moving right along uh, in my report is just, uh, again, getting back at another opportunity for us to engage the public, uh, and that is the family, uh, the parent cafe that just started. So you have a narrative written about that. Um, it just started, and we hope to expand it. But if you have any questions, um, did I see? I, I thought Robinson was here. He's not here tonight. But, um, but I know, Margaret, you're, you're uh, involved in that, so you could answer if they had any specific questions. But we are always looking to increase... Uh, parent engagement and their, them feeling welcome in the school system and a part of the whole process. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? Feel free to, yeah, Mary, go ahead. Uh, I, I didn't see um, how are the parents chosen? Margaret, you want to answer? Yeah, <laughs> if the microphone would come on. So uh, the way that this, they were chosen for this pilot program that we uh, conducted at Wyndham Hospital in December is the family liaisons at each of the schools uh, personally approached and then uh, forwarded invitations to parents that they felt would benefit from participating in this and who would be uh, good folks to, to try this with. And uh, although there were only 13 that attended at the first one, uh, there was great enthusiasm expressed by the parents because they really generated the conversation. It wasn't a presentation uh, made to them. It was a conversation uh, among them. And I think that we will see that list grow. So for now, it's, it's sort of a by invitation and bring your friend. But we see it growing organically over time. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, next in the uh, report would just be uh, an update on the fact that the Barrows and Compañeros lotteries are opening on Friday the 10th and will stay open until February 28th. If you have any specific questions about that. 
And certain. East Con will be uh, oh, that's running correct. the lottery. East Con is running the lottery. Then in your packet is the current personnel report. I don't know if there's any specific questions about that. I have Stephanie here if there are. <coughs> any questions? Okay. Okay, then also in your packet is the update on the um, sort of the finances of the Food Service Department. That was a request at our last executive committee session um, to give us an idea of where we are in that particular department. Even though it's a self-funded operation, um, you asked for details, so we included it. I don't know if you, there's any questions. I don't see Eric, but I would take a stab at answering a question if it came up. I, you know, does anybody need any explanation on that? We did talk about it at our executive committee meeting last month, but there may be some board members who aren't aware about of how the food service department funding works. Everybody's uh, up on it. Good. Okay, um, then we move on to uh, the fact that the calendar committee, which uh, Mr. Weathers is chairing, um, has had a meeting before break and met again yesterday? Today, Today I'm sorry, I knew it was, right. Um, so he'll be bringing um, some options to the board. Uh, will it be the February meeting or the January 22nd meeting? I believe that it's our, our goal is January 22nd. Okay, so you'll have the uh, uh, proposed calendar for your vote um, in two weeks. Yes, go I ahead. I heard um, over break from a lot of teachers and a couple of administrators that having extended time off next year, looking at my regular calendar, not a school calendar, but it seems like there may only be like a week of vacation time. And with that, with the holidays, people really feel with this extra time, this um, maybe not 17 days, but people feel mm -hmm. with, with a but few extra won't. days, yeah, they had a few, a little bit more time to kind of decompress right. it wasn't all holidays and all go 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 mm -hmm. so that might be something the committee wants to consider a lot of people said they felt on Monday not only were they very welcomed I heard that from lots of people that you and Neil did a fabulous job in your staff but that they felt like they had had a chance to relax because there was a little more time than just that short week in, in a week if you have Chris uh, Christmas and, and, New, and Year's, New Year's it's crazy and you're running around and there's no time to like take a deep breath and say okay that's over mm -hmm. even if we add a couple extra days to the end or something like that mm -hmm. okay that's over we can breathe enjoy ourselves for a day or two and then come back more refreshed and more ready to like jump into a new year I didn't hear that I don't think from anybody here but I did hear it from from other people I saw someone in the grocery store who was a teacher who stopped me and said I really want you to know that the two weeks was fabulous and mm -hmm. coming back on Monday this was on Monday night coming back today I felt ready and energized to sure. go back to my job and if we can give those kids just a little extra of their teachers like they get in September, I think that might be fabulous for like sure. that mid-year break. Right. So it's and just a suggestion, something that's been said to me by seven people maybe that I just happened to have run into mm -hmm. sure. since break got over. Mm -hmm. Like they felt like when they came back, they had more to give because their well was full. They had time to recharge their batteries and they had time to kind of take a little bit of time for themselves and now they can give more to their students. And, and we also have, we, we, uh, you're not the only one who got that feedback. We heard the same thing from many people. We also have some positive things to celebrate on the student attendance side. Do you want to share the specifics on that, Neil? Um, moving the day, having the students come back yesterday, uh, January 7th, instead of the, the Thursday the 2nd, um, had a significant impact on our attendance in a positive way. So go ahead, Neil. So, so last year, the, the daily student attendance rate for the first day back was, uh, don't quote me, but it was around 87 percent, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, I believe, yeah, 87.7 percent, and it was 92 percent this year, which is a difference of about 140 students more showed up to school than the number. first day back last year, which is sizable. Yeah. Actually, very sizable. Especially since we don't have a real February vacation. We just have a, a long weekend. Yeah. There's no real break until mm -hmm. April now. And so Correct. maybe just giving us those couple extra days, it's helping with attendance. It helped people feel more ready to come back instead of quite so dragged down. So I don't know. It's just something when the calendar committee takes a look at it, you might want to just keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Let me have my input. Yeah. No, no. It's, a, it's great to hear that. I've heard that too. So it's nice to hear that a number of people are saying it. Yeah, and it's good to hear that everyone's relaxed and feeling charged <laughs> for the new year. We have a lot of work to do, so I'm happy to hear that. That's great. All right, that, that's all I have for the superintendent's report. If anyone Are there any, any questions? questions or comments for the superintendent? Thank you and congratulations on all you have done. Yes, so um, 
Uh, I know between our last meeting and this meeting, um, there were a lot of uh, downtime for people. Uh, uh, but it, uh, we're getting back into the swing of things, and um, I'm going to ask the committee reports. And uh, please be sure to remember to announce when your next committee is scheduled to meet so that everybody knows. So uh, finance and audit, uh, Mark? Yeah, finance, finance and audit, we didn't meet during the holidays, between the holiday schedule and unfortunately Rita's on a medical leave. But uh, we know the grants have come in, so they're backfilling the, the grant position, so the, the, that's been finalized. We will meet next Wednesday, the 15th at 6 p.m. Uh, to go over the current state of the budget and the plans for how we're going to make it make the budget balance at the end of June. So mm -hmm. we'll meet on the 15th. And you'll be able to report then on the 22nd when we have our next Correct. meeting. Yes. Yep. Uh, any questions for Mark or additions from the com Mark, do you, you meet here you need to, the central office? You need to use your microphone. You need, yeah. you, thank you. You yeah. meet here at the central office. Yeah, we meet right? at the central office, okay, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, school planning and design committee. I'm kind of in the same boat. Our meeting was supposed to be the second, and yeah. the buildings were closed, and it was going to have to have staff come in for it. And so um, I have, you know, talked to Dawn and said, unless there's anything really pressing, our next meeting will be the first Thursday in February. I might just add um, that uh, Mike Callahan went to the uh, town council last night and reported on uh, where we are with the uh, Wyndham High School renovation project, and it was a good. It was a good presentation, and I think that the town council was appreciative of, of what he, the detail with which he reported to them. So, anybody have any other questions or comments for Tracy or comments about that committee's work? Oh, I know at our last meeting we talked about making sure that the um, town council moves forward on some of the projects. Mm -hmm such as the the roof at right. North Wyndham School and I've been told that they're moving going to move forward Did expeditiously you send an email? That's what you said No well, well we were meeting in person we okay. were meeting in person so it's 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 moving Yes okay. yes Sorry. before I even asked okay. so um, it's true there's um uh, we, we have confirmation from the town that they're working on a number of capital improvements. Uh, I don't have the specific list in front of me, but I can certainly forward those to you if you want to be kept up that on it. That would be it. helpful. But they yeah. have been, the, the town has been very helpful to us, very responsive. So we are, we're on it, right, Dawn? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to follow up on that because that was something that you had requested at the last meeting. It just so happened we were meeting with the town manager in person like the following day or two after that, and he told both Tracy and I. Um, that that things are moving forward. Mark? Has he appointed a building committee for the roof? Uh, they, yes. Well, I don't know if there's a, if they have the whole committee c completely appointed, but there are people that ha have started the process. There, we're going to do it in early January. Right. Yeah. We, we but I know people have committee to, to move right. The process right. Forward. Yeah. People have contacted him and said they want to be members of the committee. So I don't know how many. I don't know if there's a, a set number he has to achieve, but there are people that are already interested in being on it. Yeah. There's a minimum of three. Yeah, That's all I know. So. He had asked when we talked to him about getting somebody who actually works at North Wyndham School, she said yes. who was a resident yes. of Wyndham, to be on the committee. And she's one of the ones. Yeah, she's one of, one of the teachers, I think it is. The assistant principal. Uh, okay, the assistant principal there, Tara Kramer. Mm -hmm. So that will get things m moving. Good. I hadn't done anything more with than that because you said yeah. you were going to send yeah. an, an email or a letter or yeah. something. So. And I'm sorry over the holidays I forgot to follow up with you. <laughs> I took care of it. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, policy committee. Elda. Hello and Happy New Year. Thanks. Same to you. Thank you. So uh, we did meet at the end of last month, uh, just before the break, and we were all anxiously ready to start the break. But we did do some, some uh, digging in, and we did discuss um, getting – a, um, a list of the policies so we could sift through them and come up with and prioritize them. We're still in the process of getting that. So hopefully by the 23rd when we meet uh, at 530, <laughs> and we also meet in um, central office, we will 
hopefully have it and we can come up with a list. And But the other thing that we did work on was um, the revision of 3323 procurement business non instructional operations. So we'll bring that to you tonight for a second reading. So that is it. Thank you. Great um, job. I, I've heard a lot of good things tonight about um, the start of, the, of a good year. And that two weeks was nice. It was very mm -hmm. nice. The kids are refreshed. So, um, and the teachers. Sorry, Ilda, I didn't mean to step on your words. Um, That's okay. I just wanted to, when you say uh, working on a on a plan, I, I, I think I understood that you may be having, say, a calendar of, of, of pr the order in which you're going to take up review of the board policies. That's, well, that's and particular, you know, including the plan, personnel policies. So, many, so we're going to have right, to like the personnel policies personnel being one of the things first. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So after your meeting on the 23rd, will you be presenting to us that list? So your fellow board members can know what order you're going to be taking things up? Yes, definitely. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. That would be helpful. All right. You're welcome. Anybody else? Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't have anything to add except that we will be reviewing uh, and making a plan at the next meeting on and coming to you with a list for the year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Um, executive committee, uh, we met on, I think it was the 20, 15th, I think. Uh, the 15th, it was sometime in mid, in mid, uh, since our last meeting. Um, Second Wednesday, right? Yeah. yeah. And on the 16th. And uh, we have another meeting scheduled uh, for next Wednesday, the 15th. Uh, after the Finance and Audit Committee meets. So we're scheduled to start at 7, but if the Finance and Audit Committee um, runs a little late, we might, um, we might uh, start 15 minutes later than that or something of that sort. Um, uh, so we do have a number of things that we're working on, including um, waiting to hear from the from, uh, the Finance and Audit Committee about where we are with the budget, closing the budget gap for this year. Because the superintendent has been <coughs> working with us to try to deal with some other issues that we really need finance, you know, we need financial information before we can make decisions about those issues. Um, and uh, we also will be um, talking at the next meeting about uh, ways that we can um, move forward working with the other two boards in town. Uh, uh, people may have been following uh, what's been happening, but the the new chair of the Board of Finance, Tyler Griffin, came to our meeting last month and offered that if, if at any time uh, we wanted to come to the Board of Finance and, and, and discuss things with them, that there was an open invitation um, and uh, we've extended the same invitation to them. And um, I will say that uh, uh, they are, they've, set, they've responded to me in the past 24 hours saying that actually the Board of Finance and Finance and Audit Committee should maybe put, wrap their heads around this a little next week when you meet. Um, they're interested, um, before we all get um, elbow deep in our budget setting process, perhaps there be a, a working session, um, just an informal discussion with the Board of Finance about what we're thinking going into our budget setting process, what some of our uh, hopes and, and uh, challenges might be, um, so that uh, maybe we can work together rather than go to them on March 15th with our complete budget and just try to get them to accept it, but have conversations beforehand so there's more understanding about uh, where the opportunities are and where the challenges are. So I'd like to encourage us um, to figure out ways that we can um, have these kinds of discussions. The other thing that was brought up last night at the town council meeting uh, was the idea of a joint um, 
town council, uh, board of finance, and board of ed um, mini retreat um, where we could all get together uh, probably up at Eastern Connecticut State University at a, at a, at that would, a place that would be offered to us for free and um, maybe do some goal setting, um, some work together about what our priorities are. That was not put out as a formal request at this point in time, but I'm just putting it out there to the, my fellow Board of Ed members that this may be an invitation that's going to be coming down the pike uh, soon for us. We also, at our last meeting, did discuss some of the um, issues that didn't get covered in the, in the retreat that was canceled last October um, in the course of the upcoming board meetings. And so we identified some of the uh, key programmatic uh, things that we'd like to be discussing in a deeper way at the board level, including um, some of the programs that we're running in our, in our district um, and whether or not, you know, what's, what's the evidence that those programs are, are performing the way they should be and, and we're getting the most out of those programs that we can um, and how much they cost and what sort of the cost benefit um, equation is on some of these programs. So, uh, for example, uh, we talked about um, Dos Rios, um, the ECHO program and... Camino Alto is some of the programs we'd like to have deeper discussion about um, at future board meetings. So we'll set aside, you know, a chunk of time to hear from the staff and talk about those things. And our hope was to try to have those discussions um, in the coming meetings so that before we finalize a budget, um, we'll have um, the information we need to make decisions on things. Does that make sense to folks? Yes, Mark? Yeah. Where, where do we stand in our discussion of the Unified Finance Department? Um, uh, Dr. Garc I mean, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Youngberg and I had uh, a meeting with um, the town manager uh, before the holidays. Um, as everybody knows, uh, we have a Unified Finance Department until such time as there is a charter change. Um, it's in the charter, and um, there is going to be a charter revision uh, uh, committee put together uh, after, you know, soon we're expecting, and um, until such time as that, as that is resolved, we are um, trying to figure out a way that we can move forward in a way that gives the superintendent and the Board of Ed the right level of oversight on the Board of Ed financial matters without having uh, Chris Johnson, for example, making ability to get in the works on a day-to-day -day basis or make decisions without them being signed off on and heard fully by the Board of Ed and the superintendent. And, um, and that would also mean... Uh, changing the equation of how he is compensated because right now the split between the board of ed and the town council is that the board of ed is is paying most of uh, the cost of the salary for that position and um and we want to decrease that greatly if he's not the business manager for the district um, right now essentially rita parsiak is operating in that capacity and we want to make sure that we become uh Based on the forensic analysis report last year, we want to make sure that we are um, on top of what is going on with our finances, and we are the ones that are making decisions about our finances and not anybody else, despite the fact that in name we have a unified finance department. That was part of that re re memo or re email we got from the top manager. So I'm just curious, yes. is that still, is that, are the three chairmen still working on that as an active, what, what group is working on that? of an active discussion? Um, we, well, the last conversation we had was probably mid-December. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, probably mid December. So, are you and the board of finance and the town and the mayor meeting? And- uh, the no, there is no meeting scheduled. I think there needs to be one soon, Mark, because I'm not clear. Although I have shared with the board of ed members that memo that was drafted up by the town manager about how this work gets divided, I am not clear that um, everybody on the town council or the Board of Finance knows about all of this. So I think there may be some people who know. Um, I did have a discussion with the um, chair of the Board of Finance personally about it. Um, And uh, I was under the understanding from the town manager, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, that he was waiting for the newly formed committees of the uh, town council to have their meetings, and I think it would be whatever the, co- the committee is, the finance administration, that committee. And I believe that Randall Prose might be the new chair of that committee. I'm not sure. Um, but this needs to move forward this month. When I spoke before the town council last night, I signaled to them that there were two or three things that were unfinished business um, that I think got put on hold um, because of the transition after the elections. Um, And this being one of them, another thing uh, is this issue of resolving oversight of the health insurance reserve fund and the health insurance self-insured fund and the proposal that was put on the table last fall about um, creating uh, an, a, a basically a board, an oversight board, and a process for all of that. That has not moved forward. And um, so I was pretty clear with the town council last night that the Board of Ed needs them to work with us on some things, and we need to start getting it moving now that it's after the first of the year. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Maybe not to your satisfaction, but <laughs> um, Lynn, yes. Would you would you then take the initiative and and uh, ask all the people that need to be there to have a meeting? Would would you send them a letter saying we need to meet? To we need to sit down and talk and about talk? these things. I'm, yes, I'm just suggesting that we as a board take the initiative and say. We need to right. Meet. I think that's a good point. I think uh, it's top of mind for us mm-hmm. at the Board of Ed and how they relate to the Board of Ed may not be top of mind uh, for the town council um, at this point in time. So, there so uh, I think uh, having uh, talked to some members on the Board of Finance, I think that they are mm-hmm. happy and willing to do that. But we should, we need the town council really because they're the body that makes the decisions over some of these matters so I will do that (laughs) thank you for the answer and you guys keep pushing me and nudging me on this okay thank you we'll do (laughs) it's not always easy (laughs) getting that everybody else to move along with us Uh, do you have anything you want to add to that I think you summed up what's going on I've been trying to make sure that the superintendent um, is front and center in these discussions because she needs to really understand and be comfortable with what's going on because we're talking about how we're deploying staff resources too. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, we're on to discussion items. Okay, um, at the December... Was it the December 11th meeting? I think we uh, was brought up that the board wanted to see s- wanted more information about the potential student performance uh, fluctuations up and down. Um, so Mr. Weathers put together some information for all of you to, to um, help you maybe understand what's actually happening with student performance data and what we're doing to try to uh, improve it. Good evening. Um, so. 
in your packets, and we're passing some around for the audience members, it came up at the December 11th meeting, like Dr. Youngberg just said, and it was mentioned at a board retreat a couple years ago, I think the one at Barrows, about a lot of our, our performance data kind of has a wave effect, like an up and down every year. I believe Ms. Lambert made the comment last board meeting, and Dr. Sewell echoed that um, effect. So I wanted... Packet. Oh, you have it in your packet. Okay. Oh, yeah, I thought they were in there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure they're oh, yeah. all right. Okay, good. So, um, anyways, what I, I did for this um, presentation, just so everybody knows, is I sort of presented the SPAC data um, instead of presenting it in bar graph form, which I normally do, to highlight the, the wave effect, which is, I don't know if that's the official name, that's what I'm calling it, that up and down <laughs> effect, um, I, I put, used a line graph just to demonstrate. And what I did is I, I purposely found examples of where I found that effect to be prominent and where it's not prominent, just for the sake of our discussion. So I didn't pick every single SBAC grade um, just to go over uh, 14 slides for the sake of going over 14 slides, just a couple to, to make the point. So when you look at SBAC math in grade 7, um, it kind of looks like a, you know, a, a slanted M there, and it goes up and down and up and down, starting in 18.2% in 2014-15, and then moves to 24%, and that meaning the percent of students uh, meeting benchmark at levels three and fours, which we want our students to do. When you look at a completely different grade level, for example, grade four, where they started at a similar place at 18.6%, they have a, a large increase, then it's flat, then they have an increase, and then they drop a little. And again, it looks a little different, uh, but again, a kind of an up and down effect that uh, we were talking about. So when you combine all the grades, and I purposely took out the, the really good ones, like I think our grade three shot, shot up like a mountain. When you look at our combined grades, which has a sample size of uh, 1,600 students versus the, the other, the grade levels that have roughly between 250 to 300 students usually, um, you could see that we've had nothing but a steady increase when you combine all the grades. So when you put them all together, there is, you don't see that up and down effect in mathematics at least. You see a, a pretty solid steady increase. Um, and uh, also, I didn't use Connecticut data, but a, a closing of the gap by about one-fourth with the state. So, so that was the, the math data. And then on the, the next page, I picked a, a couple samples. And ELA was a little more up and down all over. Um, but when you looked at grade four, you saw the effect kind of like a little bit of a mountain there where it jumps up over a couple years, about 20 points, then dips and goes up a little bit. And then in grade six, um, kind of a, a zipper effect goes up and down for a couple years and then back up. But when you, again, look at the combined grade levels, there is, in fact, a dip in 1617 to 1718. But if you look um, over the course of time, we've, we've gone up about... Uh, uh, what is about eight and a half uh, points and a matter of fact just closing the gap with the the state which I didn't include in here by about one-third so um, then I was thinking well we know there's an up and down effect because you, you pointed it out to me so why are some of the reasons for that so um, the, it's a lot of contributing factors depending but often sample sizes do matter so when you have grade level results or you take for example if you were to look at Sweeney or Wyndham Center at a grade level where there's maybe only 40 test takers you're more likely to see lots of up and down over a given year um, the other reason or another big reason is cohort performance sometimes we have a um, uh, higher or lower performing cohort than their, their peers over the last couple of years and that comes out to, to bear out and then uh, sometimes it just happens to be in that particular year there was a change in curriculum or instructional programming or instructional initiatives we always hope for the better but it could be better for worse but that affects that um, one example is we think in grade three for example we had a large jump in our reading scores this past year and that was the same year we instituted the ARC program so we we, we attribute that, we think that had played a role, for example. 
And then another, which is true depending on which grade level, sometimes staffing changes. And I don't mean staff leaves necessarily. Sometimes you have a, a kindergarten teacher one year now is a fifth grade teacher or a middle school teacher goes to elementary or vice versa. There's those sort of staffing changes or changing buildings. And sometimes that can play impact as they're learning their new role. Or you taught one subject and you teach a di different subject, another example. So, so those were uh, some of the main reasons. Does anybody have questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Mark? Right. Uh, other than serendipity, can you come up with any explanation as to, let's say, grade six ELA? We went down to 27 and then back up to 33. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're not just trusting everything to serendipity, that it happened to get better that year, that maybe after two years of decline, you, you identified something, a, a curriculum, a teaching method, or. Different groups, different. I'm looking for something more than just, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it happened because of different reasons. So what's interesting in that particular year, um, if and you go back and you look at from 1617 to 1718, that particular year for our district, there was a, just a decline in ELA across the board and almost... Uh, I don't. Want to, I think almost every grade level, and and I, we couldn't really pinpoint in that particular year there was a drop, but noticeably there was where it was like a a, a slight decrease. But in grade six in that particular year, it, it was a market decrease, and and we didn't. Sometimes in fifth to sixth we can see like, a, well, this is just sixth grade to sixth grade. Um, we sometimes in transition year see that. Um, I will note that that is, so that would be our current eighth grade. And then also cohort wise, I will say this in seventh grade and previously in fifth grade, they were markedly lower than their, their past years. So now when I'm looking at it, I can tell you it's not serendipity. That particular cohort that year, at least in 16, 17 to 17, 18, had been performing weaker than their peers in previous years. Um, just we've noticed even with all our interventions everything we've doing they're growing like in their scale scores and their average tests from the previous years but compared uh, compared with their counterparts from the previous year they're performing lower so are we doing something specific for that cohort to get them to perform better so are you putting more aids in are you changing so what we so our main, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Youngberg, our, our, what we do is, aside from just improving tier one instruction and that sort of thing, is in our, our wind blocks, for example, at the middle school, we, we're targeting what the, the needs are based on the assessment data. So when we get the SBAC data back, we look what are the weakest areas, and then when we do our internal district benchmarks, we look what are the, in, the areas of greatest need, and then we sort of fire for effect, so to speak, and prioritize those in both our intervention and, and based on the individual student and the whole group, both, like how, what, we, uh, what we focus on in our instructional practice. Thank you for your question. That's a good question. Did you have a question, Katina? Um, or a I, comment? Just to uh, help me to understand. So this is the aggregate data, right, uh, for, for grades and years? Yes. Correct. And we are not using some statistical method to control for different factors, correct? This includes all students. There's no filter for any different def demographic group, correct? Or, or, or different factors like teachers coming, going, or whatever. So what, what I really would like to know is how the same student did through time. I think that's more significant to me. I'm sorry. You want to watch the same students be tracked across the grade levels. That's what a. So you want to see cohort an, a cohort analysis. A, a cohort analysis, sure. correct? Because there's so many different factors that are happening yep. with children, right? From so homelessness to having moved to whatever has happened in their families that. We cannot control for all those factors to give us a real picture, but if each individual child or the majority of, of our children are doing better, you know, they are improving through time, that's, that's great. Sure, we actually are tracking progress for every single student in the district. And Okay. We are. Um, we're, yes. we're doing it K to eight using our iReady platform, um, which basically gives the students an assessment. Um, diagnoses what their weak areas are and then offers them re, uh, remediation uh, opportunities to improve those skills and mm -hmm. our win blocks which is our intervention blocks are aligned to those 
deficit areas to try to improve those skills. At the high school, we have a mini SAT focus. Mm -hmm. So we're actually using the skills on the math and reading side of the SAT um, to identify um, problem areas, places where they can improve and places where they're doing well and, and using um, that information to drive the remedial supports we're offering them in their win block. So every school in the district has an intervention block and we are tracking academic performance of every single student. So we'll get you whatever you want for data because we have tons of it. I, We're doing a really good job of tracking progress. So whatever you want, you just let me know. We'll get it for you. Uh, in, I don't know, in my ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. I see this data and I, and I say, well, how many of those kids were new at that grade level in that particular year or had so many problems that it deep down, right? So, so those kinds of conversations are what they're having or should be having in the data team process when they're actually sitting down after um, they've done a, a dip in to see where kids are to have the conversations. Why do you think this student didn't make as much progress as we anticipated? Sure. And you're right. Some of those social, emotional, and home issues are the reason why they're not making progress. Um, but we don't use that as an excuse. They still need to make progress, but we have to understand that the circumstances might require more. Maybe in some cases their supports are not strictly academic. Maybe the things we're giving them and when are addressing some of the things we know they need outside of the classroom. But we are having those individual conversations, Neil. And we absolutely provide just match scores. We like so we always when we show this, we show everything, including students that are, are new to us. So as as the way the federal government requires um, the state to report the scores, that's how we report them to you. But we absolutely do take looks at and actually Dr. Youngberg has been the, the biggest person in the district in asking me questions like, Well, what about this variable and this variable? And one of them is what about the students that have stayed? We've done some stuff studies in our reading data from students that have stayed in our district from K to three, but we can absolutely provide some yeah. uh, matched We're cohort looking data. at it from every angle. I, I want to win the game, so to speak, and I really do think that I, I look at, it's like my, these are my babies, right? They're just like my own kids, and what, what can we get these kids to make sure that they, they reach the highest, you know, their highest possible potential? So I am always asking those questions, like what else do we need? to win the game. Mm -hmm. So Neil and I have these conversations constantly. I'll say to him, Neil, I need you to spin this out for me. Here's what I'm looking for. And he goes and does his data magic and brings me back the results. And what did you results. call it for my information? The match cohort analysis? The match cohort. A match cohort. Analysis. You want to track a group of kids over time. Yes. Sure, be we have that. Yeah. To, yep. to look at because that will give us a, a better view or better understanding, really, mm -hmm. if the child is making progress through time, and that's all sure. that really is important to me. I'd love the opportunity to start bringing the kiddos here to have them talk about their own goals because that's that's really where I think where it's all at. We have to make sure that the students know what is it what it is that they need to get to that next level because they have to be they have to own it, right? They have to be involved in the process, and um, we have to teach them how to do that. So that's the next level. We'll get there. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Murphy. Yeah, I have. <laughs> see, I'm, unfortunately, I'm a statistician, so I have a, I have some problems with with it. But one, of, I I agree with Ms. Cavano, and that the cohort data is what you really want to look at. But I also understand that the public sees the stat scores by grade, or the the SBAC scores by grades, and that's that's what the newspaper reports, and that's what everybody reacts to, uh, even though those are in a lot of ways, you know, trash numbers because they're not looking at how students track over time. Um, another problem I have is just with SBAC because it's never been validated. And so I look at the thing going up and down and I wonder, okay, so how noisy is SBAC? I know that the, that the test has been played with from year to year so that the fourth grade students that took it in 17, 18 didn't get the same test as the students that took it the next year or the year before. And so the scores may go up and down because the test changed rather than anything that the students did. Uh, so there's a reliability issue that I don't think has ever really been addressed in SBAC. Um, I, I agree with you. The only thing we can do is compare our results to the state results and to our DERG results and to the other alliance districts. We're just always looking for ways to figure out how did Wyndham stack up against whoever it is so, we're looking at. But I yeah. agree, you're right. So looking at how our students did from one year to the next doesn't really tell you how they did against how the test changed from one year to the Correct. next. Correct. Unless you look at. But we just assume that. Or DERG data. 
Right. We're just assuming everyone else went through whatever that changed exam was. So how did we do? How did our kids do compared to the other districts who had the same yes, test? That's right. And once again, that's a public relations more than useful information in terms of educating children. And in terms of the question that Mr. Doyle asked, the research is really clear. By the time they're in the sixth grade, you've lost it. The cost of gaining past 12 years old is more than we can afford. It's more than Beverly Hills can afford. You do the best that you can, but the data that you really want to look at is K to three. And we start testing in third or fourth grade, and by that time, we've already gone past the we actually start with a diagnostic internal benchmarks in kindergarten. We don't get SBAC or anything like Correct. that that's reported to the public. Yeah. And where the kids are at the end of third grade really is a strong measure of how they're going to be in 12th grade. If we can improve where they are at third grade, then all we have to do is keep them there and we'll be fine in 12th grade. But if they're operating at 30% of where they ought to be when they come out of third grade, this community just doesn't have the money to get most of them where they need to be. And that's, I mean, you do the best that you can, but it's just not going to happen. You got to get it earlier. And so the one thing that I can see in this data is, well, we're much better than we were in 2014. But, we're, but it looks like we're starting to level off some. And so I hope that, that over the next couple of years, some of the things that you're doing and that new reading program is doing I'm encouraged by the math, by the way. That looks pretty decent. But, but I want to see the, the trajectory continue up because even though it's much better, mid-30s, low-40s, it's not good still enough. way right. lower than we need to be. Agreed. Anybody else? Mary? Yeah, um, I just want to add that it's still only one, uh, you know, one type Shots. of assessment for, you know, reading and, and one for math. And... You know, I'm a little concerned when I hear something stated about where a child is at sixth grade because the test is is a partial test. It's not telling us everything about, you know, even about their reading ability. Um, and there are always nuances in, in the science, and there are studies about neuroplasticity. So I really don't like a statement of the type that if we don't get them by third grade. So I understand you're not <laughs> saying that a, a low year for sixth grade is means we shouldn't be doing very much. I, uh, you're not saying that, but we have to be careful how we present it. And we're always, the, the, everyone is always teaching the students. And I do see a lot of progress throughout the years. That's the, the growth mindset. And we're, we're, we're with you on that. Absolutely. Got to have it. Optimism. Anything else? Thank you for the update. And it this is something I think we always want to be talking about is where we're how we're doing on this and and learning more as board members um, so uh, please feel free to bring forward other information that you think would be helpful okay wonderful um, the budget process 2020 I think we sort of covered that already when I was giving the executive committee report about um, for, you know everybody knows the calendar that we approved uh, last year now last calendar year about what our calendar is for the 2020-2021 uh, budget setting process we all know that we have to present a budget on a firm date in March um, to the town council I think that the difference between last year and this year is that we're going to be looking to set a budget um, that has some more buy-in from people outside of this board before we take it to the, to the um, Board of Finance and to the public. And we also um, are looking to have a budget book that's uh, very different. We requested that last year during the budget process, and um, the budget book this year um, will be more helpful to us, I think, in having the discussions that we need to have at the board level. Um, so uh, what I want to do is just, um, I don't have anything more to say 
say about it right now, but it is on for a discussion item. And is there anybody on the board who would like to raise ideas or suggestions about how we proceed with the budget setting process for 2020-21 so that staff hear them now so we can uh, work together to get the information to people the way they need to see it? I'm, I'm assuming we're already halfway into the process and have, you communicated with the staff and yes we've got to six get to weeks this. in yeah yeah and, and by now we should have been communicating with the student the uh, school governance councils and it's just starting I think the I, I don't have the calendar in front of me but I think it's next week the principals are expected to report back week after. so pretty soon though we're going to be in the middle of it in earnest and we need to be cognizant of the fact that we can't wait until the last final day to to deal with it because as we talked about it at our last meeting we ran into a snowstorm last year which almost precluded us from uh, getting things to the board of finance on time uh ilda and then Panda. murphy and then ilda okay i'm looking forward to a more clearly readable readable readable, <laughs> readable. book yes and i i believe that that's what we're going to get this year that's yes. the goal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a goal. To, yeah. As opposed to last year when we had to send it back a few times and A it was supposed A and B was supposed to equal C, but it didn't equal C and then D and E nothing equaled anything. So I'm looking forward to that. That's I'll say that positively. <laughs> <laughs> Looks that balance amazing. Murphy? Okay, so uh, the, the process is the process, and, and as Mr. Doyle said, it's already rolling, and you've got the usual difficulties that health care expenses will increase. Uh, I expect that contracted staff cost increases, that's another 801000 or 800 and some thousand dollars this year. It'll be another $800,000 next year. Uh, I would urge the board to take on as much as possible communicating with the public about the economic reality of the situation that you're in. Operating at a MBR budget this year is putting a strain on that's going to require, if not layoffs, razzle dazzle to make things meet. And there are a number of one-time actions that are not going to be available next year. For example, covering a pension cost in one pension account with a surplus from the other pension account, okay, that surplus, you're gonna use that surplus to do that. That's a one year thing, but the pension expense is an ongoing expense, so you're gonna to have to pick that up in the budget as well as the usual increases, plus increases that didn't get picked up in the MBR budget this year. Mm -hmm. So the increase that the board is going to be required to ask for, no kidding, is gonna be bigger than the increase that the board would be asking for had we passed a budget this past year that exceeded the MBR from the year before. And I think people need to understand that that's the economic reality that the community is dealing with. It's not just the board's problem, it's the community's problem. There is a community requirement to educate children. We can't escape that. And in order to keep the level of improvement that we were just talking about, and the statistics going, you're going to have to have the resource to do it. You cannot expect to achieve progress if you're going to be cutting staff or cutting classrooms. It's just not going to work that way. And that need that message needs to get out to people to understand that, that they have to react to it. The community is going to have to support the board and what it's doing this year. Otherwise, we're going to have a community-wide problem, not just a board of education problem. Anybody else have any comments they want to make about the budget process? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Stay tuned. Um, I'm sure there will be opportunities for us to be out and about in the public, and we should probably start uh, working on that with, with the administration about ways that we can get out into the community and um, be talking to people, with people, not, not at people, <laughs> with people. 
Um, okay, um, now we're on to action items. Uh, the first item for action tonight is recommended approval of the second reading of revised policy 3323 on procurement business non-instructional operations. Is there anything anybody wants to say about it? You all, we talked about it a little bit at our last meeting and read this is the second reading. Do we have to move a motion? Yes, I need a motion. Yes. Uh, so moved. A motion made by Katina. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mary. Uh, discussion? Everybody clear on this mm -hmm. tonight? Yay. Okay, all those in favor of the motion that's on the floor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Um, the next thing is change to the district calendar for s this current school year. And I'm gonna hand it over <coughs> to the superintendent to talk to us about this. Sure, on page 31 in your packet is the, the information about this, but uh, in short, we have already had four school closings. Um, and we're, we're only at January 8th, which is, you know, it doesn't look good with that many days closed already um, and so many more to go in the school year. So I'm making some recommendations that I think would um, help us to not um, have school uh, in session the last week in June or the second to last week in June. So the way the current calendar is written now, there's a clause on there that suggests that if there are more than five snow days prior to March 6th, which is certainly a possibility since we're already at four and it's only uh, January 8th, um, that uh, each day after five might be taken from the spring break. Otherwise, all snow days will be made up after June 12th, 2020. June 12th was the original last day of school before any of these snow days. So I made some recommendations um, that I want the board to at least consider. Uh, and that is, one of them is to change the March 6th professional development day back to a regular school day. Um, we'd be giving up the, the PD day for teachers, but because the district has so many more PD days than many of our surrounding neighbors, I'm okay with that and I want our kids to be in school as, as much as possible, especially with the state testing coming not too long after after that. I want them to have the, the additional school day back. Um, by doing that, that pushes our last day of school back to Wednesday, June 17th. And then I'd like the board to consider allowing us to do two more snow days before we start taking away from spring vacation for all the reasons that were mentioned earlier about needing to recharge and relax and really step away from the work. I, and people often make vacation plans that even though they would have known from that it says it on the calendar doesn't mean that they didn't book a vacation and aren't looking forward to getting away. So that would at least give us another opportunity not to touch the spring break. Um, and then I if we exceeded those two additional snow days and we gave them back March 6th as a school day, we probably would have to start taking away from spring break. Otherwise, we're going to end up in that last, in the week of June 22nd, um, which is really tough to finish a school year and then change over before July 1 and summer school and all those things are impacted. So these are just things I'd like the board to consider. I believe it has to be voted on because it's the, the school calendar that you approved to begin with. So mm -hmm. there's nothing we have to take action on here tonight. We just have to be open to these changes is all you're looking for. Um, well, we'd have to, you'd have to make the decision relatively soon in that we could have a snow day anytime. So Okay. You know what I mean? Because the way the calendar is currently written, it says if we have five before March 6th, the next snow day would be five. And it would be before March 6th. So if we don't change the language soon, which I heard is going to be 50 or 60 degrees soon, so I don't think we have to worry any time uh, in the next week or so, but I think it could impact us. Okay. Although it does, the language does say might be taken, so I think we have a little leeway because we could choose not to take it from spring break. But that's where we are. I would like the opportunity to give um, the staff and the community notification if we're changing March 6th back to a school day so the parents know we want the kids in school that day. It's not a day off. So y you have time, but no, yeah. No, um, I'd like to make the rec. Oh, Mark, did you want to? Yeah, I was going to make a motion before we had any real discussion. That's all. Go ahead. Yeah, I just have a question, but go ahead. Um, I'll make a motion that the Board of Education approve the conversion of Mark's March 6th, 2020 to a regular school day and adding the allowances for an additional two snow days to occur prior to March 6th before taking days from spring vacation as outlined in the memo from Dr. Youngberg of January 8th. Second. second. Motion made by Tracy, seconded by Murphy. Now we're op up for discussion, Mark. If memory serves me well, this five days and then take time from spring break is written into the teacher's contract. And I'm wondering if we've, if, if that, if I'm remembering that wrong or if that's not, if the, 
Because some of this is contractual with the teachers. I would have to check to see if it's written into the... Do you happen to know that or do you want to find out? Because she can pull up, she might be able to pull us up the contract and take a peek. I don't think she's... I mean, I'm not uh, opposed to it. I yeah. just, I just, this has... I seem to recall it not being on previous calendars while I was still working in the district. So if it was contractual, that would just confuse me that it would be on one year's calendar and not on another, <laughs> but... Mm. But it always was that if, if we had okay. certain number of snow days before, we were going to take them away. Okay. But then we got so scared to take them away because people had planned vacations and, <laughs> yeah. and, and on and on. And they show up meetings okay. and yell at us for mm -hmm. about 45 so minutes. So I, <laughs> I would recommend that we check the teachers' union okay. so contract. We can get you that information. Anything else? I think that what is in the, co in the contract or what I recall is the number of days that you have to work. That's but definitely not, in there. That, that's definitely yes. in there, but not, not about the April vacation. Well, we could get we that double information, check. double check, and, and bring it to the next board meeting. That still gives us plenty of time to notify. Do you want to do it that way? For my motion, yeah. Sure. Um, does that make sense to folks that we uh, hold and vote on it at the 22nd? So technically, under Robert's rules, we would, there's a motion on the floor. It's That's been seconded. My motion. I think you table it. Do we table it? Yeah. So we're going to table gonna the motion. It. Defer it? Yeah, table means you're going to take it back up later in the meeting. Okay, defer so defer it. Defer means you're going to take it up at a subsequent okay, meeting. Thank okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. So we're going to defer it to the, our next meeting. Are there any other considerations that board members would like to put on the table before we, you know, so we may have an answer to a question that you have outstanding other than what was brought up about the contract? Yes. I don't know if I have anything different. I, I just have a question. Um, <clears throat> now, do we have to vote on this one vote has to include one, two, and three, or can't we just vote yeah, on March 6th, changing that from professional de development to a full day? Well, we could break it up. There's no reason to say that we... Yeah, I think but we should. Well, so people know. Well, we could break it up and... I also think the sooner we can signal to staff and the parents and everybody what the intentions are, are, are likely to be um, moving forward throughout the year, the better, rather than doing it piecemeal. That, um, just the downside to doing it in two different pieces is that we, don't, we, we get less notice for people about change, possible changes. That's just a thought. We, we're not taking action today, so... You can all think about it. Mm -hmm. And people watching this or hearing this may have opinions about it, and they can let us know before, yeah, before our next meeting. Um, Katina, were you going to say something oh, else? I, I think we should vote all at once in the next meeting, as you suggested. That way, the entire thing can be communicated one, at once. Okay, so well, everybody can think about it, and we will defer action but plan to put it on the agenda for the, um, at the, on the 22nd. So, okay, so question. Now, as far as if we start taking from the spring break, now we start on that Friday the 17th and then work up. Work backwards. So yeah. now, work backwards, yes, backwards, not up. So now, how do, when would we allow people, when, we, when would we be able to let people know? Because if somebody has, it has yeah, to buy it's, it's hard air, to say because I don't know when those. Ticket. We don't know yeah, if there will the be snow days. We may not have, have, have no any way. other snow days, and then the only we probably will. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing we have to, you know, we'll give up is the PD day if we don't have any more snow days. That would be a great. That would be a great solution if it came to that. But who knows? We still have a lot of winter left. Known, so. A lot of winter. Well, anybody who's watching this, or anybody who wants to weigh in, let us know. We can't we're book be an, taking uh, a plane ticket until February, so we're good. You're just worried about your own yeah, vacation. Yeah. Your own You're vacation. kidding yeah. yourself. I just already know that. Uh, you can book a plane ticket. You don't want to wait till February. Okay. Anything else on this? No. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like to use the chair's prerogative to call on Murphy Sewell right now before we get into public comment. Um, okay. He has an announcement he'd like to make. All right, so <clears throat> uh, I will be submitting my resignation to the Board of Education to the town clerk tomorrow morning. 
And tomorrow evening, the Wyndham Democrat Town Committee will nominate someone to fill the position on the Board of Ed, a person that I'm confident that the Town Council will uh, happily confirm at their next meeting. Um, I'd like to say it's been an honor and a privilege to serve as a member of the Wyndham Board of Education for the past 10 years, um, and I will miss all of you. Starting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you for your service. Ten years is a long time, so we appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Murphy. I think with you stepping down, that leaves you came on around the same time as Tracy. Really together, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. the old person now on the board. Well, she's the senior. Well, Mark, Mark, Mark has <laughs> tenure <laughs> too. <laughs> so. Mark was there when we arrived. But Mark said a little less. Right. We still, we still using the abacuses yeah, back, he, right? He, he, <laughs> took a, he took a break. He took a vacation. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Murphy. Thank you very much. Um, uh, public comment. Is there anybody who'd like to speak under public comment? Yes, Mr. Lake. Yes, you can come up and uh, you have to use the mic, though. Oh. <laughs> Testing. It's been 11 years since I've made a presentation before a Board of Education. If I appeared uncharacteristically nervous tonight, I was. <laughs> but it felt real good. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's not such a scary thing. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear from people. Yes. Anybody else under public comment? Can, can, bo can board members make a comment or is only the public just learning? Well, you, technically, you should take a leave of your seat and go to speak. Or, yeah. The public seat. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to uh, remind everybody that this next Saturday, uh, Wyndham High School will host the Three Kings Day cultural celebration. It was fabulous last year. Um, 600 people or more came, uh, had presents for everybody. So I encourage all uh, everyone to attend. Thank you. And. Uh, so uh, not seeing anybody else uh, stepping up, uh, we are going to uh, uh, I have an executive session, but I'd just like to make an announcement because uh, we are not ready with um, some information from the finance office because of uh, just uh, some leave time and, uh, you know, uh, health reasons and whatever. Uh, we need we need to uh, postpone uh, number one uh, regarding the Wyndham Federation teachers contractual grievance uh, to the January 22nd meeting. Um, uh, Attorney Ritter will be with us at that meeting to do that. So, so uh, I make a motion we go into executive session to discuss um, something concerning the employment of a school administrator. Yes, that's a motion made by Tracy. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Katina. All those in favor of uh, going into executive session? <coughs> Opposed? N unanimous. Um, so that's the last item on the agenda.